What's up everybody, it's Kevin Frost here with another RPG Maker VX Ace Arc Engine tutorial. Uh, today I'm going to be going over a swimming mechanic that I've made for the Arc Engine. Um, and so before I go into showing you how to make it, I'm just going to show you really quick uh, what it's going to look like so you'll know if you want to use it or not. Um, I'm going to be using my Nyancap project. Um, I use this one a lot for... My, oh, uh, I use this one a lot for the Arc Engine tutorials that I do, just because it's the biggest project that I've ever done with the Arc Engine. So it is, it has a lot of good uh, ways to show you what you can do with the Arc Engine. So, uh, let's go to the swimming level. Okay. So, uh, as you can see, it's just a regular Arc Engine level. Uh, we got little message boards, uh, you can jump, move around, and whatnot. Um, but then, as soon as you jump into water, you'll splash, and you can now swim. So, it's, I mean, as you can see, it's just like an Arc Engine level. Uh, you can have all the mechanics of a regular Arc Engine level, and but this time, now they're swimming. So you can still collect things, you can do whatever you want, or you should even be able to still... If you've seen my tutorial video on how to create stompable enemies, you should still be able to do that as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, so if you like what you see, then keep watching, and I will show you how to make this game again. So, there's only a couple things you're going to need to do. Uh, you're going to need two events, and you're going to need a common event. Now the two events you're going to need are only if you have areas like this. Uh, where it's, you know, um, regular arc engine ground and then you're swimming or whatever you want to use it for. Because I guess you could even use this for like a lower gravity type level or something like that. So, the two events you're going to need is something to turn a switch off and something to turn the switch on when you enter the different areas like the water. So, uh, when you turn the switch off, it's super simple event. You just want to make sure it's player touch. Um, and then you want to make sure you have this comment where you're stating the event's width, height, make them deny gravity so it doesn't fall, and you want to just turn off whatever switch uh, you have it set to. So I just have mine set to swimming. Oh, excuse me. Um, I just have mine set to swimming. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, just make sure you have the switch. And then when you turn on the switch, you're going to want to do a few things. So, you know, the regular, set the comment. Um, these two right here, the animation and the sound, are just what I've chosen to add to it. You can have it play whatever sound you want. You can have it show an animation. You don't have to have it play a sound or show an animation if you want. This is just what I have to make it look like they're falling into the water. So it plays the splash animation, and then it plays the dive sound. So, uh, and then it turns on the switch swimming. Now something else you want to make sure that you do is when it turns on this switch swimming, Make sure you make a new page, so you'll click new page, and then you're going to want to have it set to the conditions if the switch swimming is on, so when it turns on the swimming switch, make sure you have it do nothing. Just still have it set like this, have it still deny gravity, set the width and height and stuff like that. So it doesn't move, but just have it not do anything. Because if you don't do this, uh, whenever the player touches any of these events, it's going to play the sound effect and the event, even if they're not actually going into the water, and it's just gonna, it's gonna make it look bad. So, make sure you have those. So, this is for if you're entering and exiting the water, and if you have something where the map is entirely made of water or whatever, and you're not gonna have these little areas where it's dry ground, you don't even have to have these, just make sure the swimming switch gets turned on when they enter the level, and then turn it off when they exit the level. So, uh, onto the common event. Um, the one that I was using is this one right here. So you may have noticed that there were little bubbles anytime I would swim. Uh, you don't have to have these, this is just something that I am using. Um, and it's actually using a custom script. Uh, the script is Aravlapapos, or however you say that, uh, um, Particle Engine. Uh, this is honestly an amazing script. I love using this script for things. I just, I love being able to have particle effects in RPG Maker. So if you want to go through and get this uh, script, I will leave a link to it in the about section of the video. Um, and then you can get this script, you can add it, and you can make your own particle effects, and you can even make it so that it looks like there's bubbles coming out of your mouth anytime you swim. So, uh, that's how I was making the bubbles, but it makes it a little more complicated using that, so we're just going to use the swimming simple, which is, this is all you'll need. So, I'll go into it really quick. Um, so the only thing you gotta have is you need to have a conditional branch. 
So what I'm using is if Y button is being pressed. Now the Y button is the S button on the keyboard, so it's not the regular A button for the jump. I'm using Y. This way you can use uh, your jump and a different key for like swimming, or if it's like a zero gravity type level, uh, you can have two different functions going on. So I just have mine set to Y, so the S key, uh, S for swim, I guess. Um, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that the set handling when conditions do not apply is, is checked. So when the Y button or S key is being pressed, you're gonna wanna have another conditional branch. So if the switch button press is turned on, and again, set the handling for another event. So if button press is turned on, then uh, these comments are just here to help me remember what is what. You don't have to have these comments, but I do. So if the button is, so if the button press is on, it's gonna call this script. So uh, money sign game underscore player dot move underscore y then parentheses three. This is going to be what's going to make the player sync when the button, when the jump button isn't being pressed. So, um, you can change this to whatever you want. 3 is what the person was syncing at. You could change it to 10 and they'll fall super fast. Um, you can set it to however you want. I found 3 was a good kind of like floating speed, but whatever you want to set it to, you can set it higher, lower, whatever. So that's all you need in this section. Now the else handler. This is what's going to be making the player actually swim. So I have it play a sound effect, jump. That's what it'll play when the person swims. Again, comment, just let me know this is the swimming part. And then the script, it's gonna call, again, the exact same thing, money, game, underscore, player, dot, move, underscore, y, in parentheses, negative 10. So this is gonna make the player move negative 10 on the y axis. Uh, you can change this, make it so they move even higher by moving it up to like negative 20, or you can set it to a positive and it'll make them go down. Uh, whatever you wanna do. Uh, nope, we're just gonna, well, I'm gonna cancel anyway. Um, but that's how you make the player swim or jump or whatever you want to have them do. And then this, you're going to want to make sure you have a switch turn on. So this is the button press switch. And you remember from up here, the conditional branch, the button press. This is very important. So when it turns this on, it's going to then make it so the player can only sync unless they let go of the S key. This, so this way the player can't just hold down the S key and have them shoot up to the top because they swim super fast because it keeps calling this script and makes them move repeatedly up, 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 up. So make sure you want to you want to make sure you have this switch turn on and then I just have it wait for five frames just so that, that there's no chance of it you know running this command twice in the split second before it turns on the switch or whatever. Okay, so that is the sinking and swimming of the whole thing. Now back to this part of the conditional branch. If Y button is being pressed, we're gonna go to the else handler. Uh, so if else, you're gonna wanna do control switch, button press, turn off. So this is gonna be as soon as they release the S button, it's gonna call this else handler. So it's gonna turn off the button press so the players can then swim again and then it's gonna have them sink on, on the Y axis by one. So this is all you need to do uh, to get it all set up to have them swim. So yeah, uh, if you could just copy it down exactly how I have it like this, um, then it'll be working just fine. Um, so you'll just want to make sure you just want to make sure that when you make it, you know, name it whatever you want, set it to parallel process. Make sure it's set to the swimming switch because if it's not, it's not gonna work. Um, and then just make sure you have it all set up like this and it should work just fine. Um, if you have any more questions um, about this, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I will try and answer them um, as quickly as possible. If it doesn't work for you, if I have been a little unclear, because sometimes I can start rambling about things that really don't matter and I'll get people confused. So if it doesn't work, if you can't figure it out, just let me know and I'll try and help you out where I can. Um, so yeah, and if you have any questions about anything, any other aspects about RPG Maker or if you have any other tutorials you want me to make, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make those tutorials. Um, now really quick, 
I'm not sure how many of you know this, but a new version of RPG Maker is going to be coming out uh, in about two weeks now. It's going to be RPG Maker MV. I am super excited about this RPG Maker. Um, with the new RPG Maker, you're going to be able to start making apps for mobile devices, so like iPhone, Android. You'll also be able to make uh, web-based games, which is going to be super awesome. I'm so excited for that. Um, I'm really excited to see what people start creating with that. Uh, I'm also excited to see what kind of uh, things that, like, uh, you know, code writers start making, uh, as far as, like, um, scripts go for opening up even more possibilities with RPG Maker. So if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to Google RPG Maker MV, uh, go look at some of the videos they've got, it looks like it's gonna be super amazing. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because, uh, I'm gonna start making tutorials for that RPG Maker. I'll still do tutorials for VX Ace if people still have questions, I'll be happy to help. But I'm hoping to start a new tutorial series for RPG Maker MV, uh, just to help people learn everything that they can do with RPG Maker MV. So, uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this. Uh, and again, if you have any questions or anything like that, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And that should be about it. So I will see you guys later. Bye, 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 Bye 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 b